Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we are looking at X-Men King Size Annual number, number 4 Total Classic from Chris Claremont, John Romita Jr., Bob McLeod. Cannot wait to show it to you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Okay, so this is kind of special for me because this is kind of my first time experiencing this as a lifelong X-Men fan um, who thoroughly enjoyed Chris Claremont's run. Um, this is before my time. Um, I started on X-Men Annual 6, was the first one I was able to buy with my own greedy little grub, grubby fingers. And um, uh, so this is retro. Like, um, I recently reviewed the Brent Anderson number five, the George Perez number three. And I don't know, I don't know how, how I never like, thought to seek this out. And then I found out it was drawn by John Romita Jr. And this is before his run. And I wasn't overly blown away by his run, even though I have a huge nostalgia for it now. But um, artistically speaking, this is inked by Bob McLeod. So the New Mutants co-creator, and he's very uh, good finisher. Um, pretty distinct with his looks. I think he'll bring a lot to it. So I think it's going to be great. And I love the splash page already. That is freaking amazing. And this needs to be like ripped off and done again. Nightcrawler's Inferno. His, like the logo is, looks like it's part of his forehead. And I think that's amazing. And interesting Glennis Ween, like that she chose to color <laughs> the logo the same as his skin. Hmm. Very interesting. Chris Claremont writer, John Romita Jr. and Bob McLeod artist, Tom Orzakowski, Glennis Ween, uh, X-Men Legends, Louise Jones, editor, before she married Walt Simonson, Jim Shooter, editor-in-chief. So all is well with the world in 1980 in the world of X-Men. Can you imagine? Like, this is the pinnacle, people. Um, I really do like that splash page. That looks really good. And I always love, like, a fun, warm scene at the X-Men. What? Nightcrawler's 21st birthday? Interesting, because I this is the first time... Like, I feel like the ages have always been sort of quasi, because, you know, superheroes don't really age in real time. Or else, I mean, Kitty would be like, you know, 90 by now, or not 90, but you know what I'm saying. So they always keep them around the same age, which makes sense. Like, I don't want them to age in real time. I'm aging in real time, and I feel old enough. I don't need my characters to be, you know, at death's door as well. There are a lot of fun things going on here. I love uh, um, the X-Men just doing, like, normal things. <laughs> Wow, Kurt Wagner, we took cooked a freaking turkey. I mean, I guess if you had to feed the X-Men, like, every day it would be like Thanksgiving. Love Wolverine gnawing on the turkey leg. Wolverine, and he also gives uh, Nightcrawler a picture of himself. That is so great. That warms my heart. That reminds me of the playful, like, sort of uh, rivalry relationship between um, Kurt and Logan. Well, Ramita Jr. is, like, really giving it here with the detail. I don't know if he's, like, feeling the need to compete with the likes of, uh, like, John Byrne and George Perez at this time, or if this is Bob McLeod just kind of going nuts. But, like, to have all this detail and then to do this crazy uh, texture on this carpet, super busy. I'd be very curious to see the original art. Don't mind it, mind you. I mean... When it comes to detail in comics, gimme, 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 gimme some more. But, I mean, you're drawing every book on the bookshelf and little busts at the same time. I mean, that is crazy. You go, John Romita Jr. And interesting, he would not become the regular penciler of the X-Men for several years after this. Cool stuff. Doctor Strange. The X-Men annuals were always, like, a fun place for guest stars, crazy villains. This ad is interesting, and it's funny because it reminds me of, uh, like, the, not What The, but maybe the No Prize book. Maybe it's What The. But, like, how, in, in humorous ways, they often, like, present She-Hulk as Mr. and Mrs. Hulk, even though they're cousins. So they're not, the, they're not 
I mean, aren't they from like New York? Not the South, right? So what's happening here, part the second, Chris Claremont, a little pretentious in his writing, but that's part of the appeal, right? This is cool, like this big mountain, like the big open mouth, but then you have like that sort of repeating up around the mountain. I mean, that's very George Perazian in a way. Impressive, once again, impressive. I love Kitty, like phasing through the wall, peeking your head through the <laughs> and Xavier, always horrified by whatever Kitty's doing. Rightly so, I would imagine. A lot of really good, solid art in here. I have to say I'm impressed. I think that, especially early in John Romita Jr.'s um, art career, Bob McLeod probably did bring a lot to the table. And they're credited as artists, so I'm thinking with McCoy is more of a finisher than just an anchor here. But I don't know that for sure. I haven't seen the original art. I'd kind of love to. Um, interesting. Storm's got a lot of pupils. I have to say, I do prefer white eyeballed Storm. I mean, look at the X-Men, you know? Making, you know, screw you little orphan Annie, the X-Men made not having pupils cool. Look at all that. I mean, look at this, pages like this make me wanna cry. Look at all these great comic books. A little before my time, but still. Kind of, but not really. I don't know, anyway. Doctor Strange. You know, it's so interesting because everyone was like freaking out as how great the Doctor Strange movie is, was. And now that it's on Disney Plus, everyone's like, oh, it sucks. It's the worst Doctor Strange ever. Like there's been 10 million Doctor Strange movies, but um, I don't know, that's fandom for you. I guess I'll have to check it out and make my own opinion. Imagine that. I mean, this is like such a classic uh, X-Men annual. I always felt like, uh, you know, especially a certain, like, let's say number three through annual 11. That's a good solid eight years of amazing, tremendous, epic summer blockbusters. That is such a hideous version of Storm. That makes me want to cry. Yuck. Like, Storm is so beautiful. What the hell happened there? She had, she ate bath salts and that's what happened. Poor Storm. Anyway. She's like, I'm all good now. I melted. I'm fine. No worries. I'm wind rider. I'm claustrophobic. That's my Achilles hill. But I can melt. I can turn in. I can eat bath salts. I can recover. Pretty art. Very classic looking Doctor Strange. the pervy mustache wouldn't oh my god like he's way too old now but when him john waters made it like a oh john waters directing himself as dr strange <laughs> what a great way to end the video on that huh oh, coloring mistakes all throughout anyway colossus's big white legs or maybe he's just floating i don't know anyway Huh, you're an X-Man, ain't you? Huh, am I? Kitty realizes she's an X-Man. Hmm, anyway. Classic, you say? Oh, what's this? Letters about X-Men 137. The death of Phoenix. Screw you, screw you. You stink murderer. Yeah, Phew. you don't kid around. Yeah, what were they expecting? That, okay, I don't need to read anything else for the rest of the day. Mr. Claremont, you stink murderer. David Champagne, that's the best retail, or like uh, reaction ever to the death of Jean Grey. Anyway, awesome X-Men annual. Thanks so much for watching, guys. King Size X-Men annual number four. Pretty cool art from John Romita Jr. and Bob McCloud. Guest starring Doctor Strange. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. Share my content. I'll bring you more later.